Hello students, welcome you all to the Dokumi Radiology class. Today's session is Imaging in Bowel Obstruction at Various Levels. Coming to the case scenario. A neonate annually diagnosed to have Down syndrome presents with bilious vomiting on day 1. He was evaluated with X-ray abdomen followed by oral bearing. So what do you get? You get in X-ray, you get the double bubble sign. And it is confirmed on the barium. Barium uh, does not pass distal to this point. So you get the double bubble sign. So what is your diagnosis? Yes, it is duodenal atresia, which is commonly seen in Down's babies. Let's see it in detail. So first our topic is congenital hypertrophic pyloric stenosis. It refers to the idiopathic thickening of the gastric pyloric musculature and it's commonly reported in the first born male child. It is commonly from the first born male child. And the neonate presents with non bilious vomiting. This students, please listen. All those that are highlighted in blue is very important. It is the first born male child and it is non bilious vomiting. There is a palpable lump during feeding. It is most commonly seen four weeks after birth. So this is due to the idiopathic thickening of the gastric pyloric musculature. And what do you get in x-ray? Yes, you get a single bubble appearance. It is just one bubble. So single bubble is CHPS. That is congenital hypertrophic pyloric stenosis. That is non bilious vomiting. Now, what are the barium findings? Coming to the barium, there are three signs that is described in CHPS. That is string sign. String sign is a narrow string of barium that is seen which is traversing through the thick gastric pyloric musculation. Mushroom sign, this string with the dilated or the duodenal bulb is forms a mushroom that is a mushroom sign and there is a double track sign the barium which trickle through the crowded mucosa that is demonstrated as parallel lines and it is the double track sign. So there are three, three barium signs that is a string sign, the mushroom sign and the double track sign in congenital hypertrophic pyloric stenosis. And ultrasound that is the investigation of choice. So we have to learn the findings in the ultrasound. So ultrasound is the investigation of choice and here we get pyloric muscle wall thickness more than 3 millimeter. That is the most important sign. So that is the pyloric muscle wall thickness is more than 3 millimeters. Pyloric transverse diameter that is more than, more than 13 millimeter and the pyloric channel that is uh, the length that is more than 16 millimeter. So three findings pyloric muscle wall thickness more than 3 millimeter, transverse diameter more than 13 millimeter and the length more than 16 millimeter. So what are the findings? You get a target sign in the cross section, target sign, the cervix sign that is in the longitudinal section, cervix sign and the antral nipple sign. This is the redundant mucosa projecting into the gastric antrum. So this is the antral nipple sign. The redundant mucosa of the pylorus projecting into the gastric antrum and this is the antral nipple sign. So three signs in ultrasound, three signs in Barium. Coming to the uh, clinical scenario that is a duodenal atresia. It is usually associated with Down syndrome as in our case and it presents with bilious vomiting on day 1. These are the differentiating clinical aspects with duodenal atresia and CHPS. CHPS was non-bilious vomiting usually 4 weeks after birth. Here it is bilious vomiting on day 1. This is the most common cause of intestinal obstruction in a neonate and the x-ray abdomen is the investigation of choice and it shows double bubble sign double bubble sign in case of duodenal atresia and is it a specific or is it the diagnosis when you see a double bubble no you have several dds let's see the dds of a double bubble sign are first and foremost duodenal atresia the most common among neonates then others are external compression that is due to annular pancreas can also cause this double bubble sign and occasionally you see in mid gut volvulus which if it cause complete obstruction then also you get the double bubble sign. Now the third atresia 
that is a jejunal atresia that shows the triple bubble sign. So you get three bubbles. So single bubble in CHPS, double bubble in dual atresia and triple bubble you see in jejunal atresia. Mid-gut volvulus. A co complication of malrotated bubble resulting in proximal bubble obstruction. And the most common symptom is bilious vomiting and the most common age group is neonates usually one to two weeks after birth. So mid-gut volvulus is a complication of malrotated bubble. And what are the imaging findings? You see in barium you see the classic corkscrew sign. Here the distal duodenum and the proximal jejunum do not cross midline as it usually do but instead it pass inferiorly and it is, it is prone to twist at its shortness and so in case of a normal rotation that is the duodenum should pass and the proximal jejunum the distal duodenum and the proximal jejunum should pass the midline but here in midget volvulus this does not occur instead it goes like this inferiorly so that is the corkscrew sign of the midget volvulus so it resembles like this forms the corkscrew sign of the midget volvulus and in USC and CT what do you see you get a whirlpool sign this represents the swirling appearance of the mesentery and the superior mesenteric vein around the superior mesenteric artery so you get the whirlpool sign in USG and CT next volvulus is gastric volvulus it occurs when the stomach twists on its mesentery and to call it a gastric volvulus it should be at least 180 degree and it should cause bowel obstruction then only it can be called as a gastric volvulus the stomach twists on its own mesentery at least 180 degree and it should cause uh, outlet obstruction and this is exam CT showing a gastric volvulus CT shows enlarged twisted stomach and that is uh, seen in gastric volvulus and sigmoid volvulus this is very important because it's the most common site of volvulus sigmoid volvulus is the most common site and it occurs when the sigmoid colon twists on its sigmoid mesocolon it's always in anti-clockwise direction it's always in anti-clockwise direction and the clinical features of large bowel obstruction are seen in case of sigmoid volvulus that is constipation abdominal bloating nausea and or vomiting it is commonly seen in elderly Please note, it is seen in neuropsychiatric patients mostly. That is from the asylum, you get the reports, most of the cases are reported in asylums. And so it is seen in neuropsychiatric patients. The most common volvulus, that is sigmoid volvulus, occurs in anti-clockwise direction always. And please note, it is seen common in neuropsychiatric patients. The predisposing factors are adhesion bands, long pelvic mesocolon, narrow attachment of the pelvic mesocolon, Chagas disease, chronic constipation, laxative abuse, high fiber diet. All these have been asked as uh, your know, questions like all these are the predisposing factors of sigmoid volus, all except. So please study all these points which are highlighted in blue. And the anesthetic agent contraindicated in case of volvulus that is nitrous oxide. We should not never give nitrous oxide as an anesthesia in case of sigmoid volus why because it may lead to development of high pressure in closed cavities of the body so that is the anesthetic agent contraindicated in sigmoid volvulus and non-operative techniques like endoscopic detorsion is an initial treatment whereas a definitive treatment is sigmoid dectomy now what are the imaging findings in x-ray you see the coffee bean sign the classic coffee bean sign also known as a kidney sign or the bent inner tube sign. So it's a coffee bean kidney sign or the bent inner tube sign. Here the closed loop of the sigmoid colon distance with yes. So this is a sigmoid volvulus. You see there is an apposition of the medial walls, apposition of the medial walls of the dilated bowel forming the cleft of the coffee bean. So there is a cleft of the coffee bean formed by the apposition of the medial walls and the lateral walls of the dilated bowel forms the outer wall of the bean. So this classic appearance is known as a coffee bean sign. So the thing is distended a hostel loop and it overlaps at the liver or the right flank overlap sign. 
what do you see in barium enema? You see the bird of prey sign that is the tapering of the so when you get the in the barium enema the tapering of the barium column is seen and this is known as the bird of prey sign. Next volvulus is cecal volvulus. It is a twisting of cecum around its mesentery. It is a very rare condition where the sigmoid volvulus is the most common whereas its counterpart that is the cecal volvulus is rare. Here the cecum is getting twisted and it is the cecum is the part which is getting twisted. Now how will we compare the cecal and sigmoid volvulus on x-rays? How will we find out? Let's see. Sigmoid volvulus is the most common. Cecal volvulus is rare. Sigmoid volvulus arises in the pelvis that is in the left lower quadrant whereas cecal arises in the right lower quadrant. Sigmoid extends towards the right upper console. It is from the left to the right whereas cecal volvulus it extends from the right towards the epigastrium or the left upper cone. So it is like this. Sigmoid shows a hostile appearance whereas in cecal hostile pattern is maintained. Sigmoid volvulus causes large bowel obstruction whereas cecal volvulus causes both large and small bowel obstruction. Sigmoid volvulus with few air fluid levels are seen whereas cecal volvulus only one air fluid level is seen. So that is how we compare the sigmoid and the cecal volvulus. Now, gallstone ileus. It's a different entity. It is the small bowel obstruction that is due to an impacted gallstone and it is mostly at the terminal ileum. So impacted gallstone mostly at the terminal ileum causing small bowel obstruction. That is what is gallstone ileus. So there is a triad associated with this gallstone ileus and it is known as regular triad. So here you get three findings. First one is pneumobilia, that is air in the biliary tree. Small bowel obstruction. Here you can see uh, valvular conduitus and there is dilated loops. So there is evidence of small bowel obstruction. And there is an ectopic gallstone which is impacted in the right iliac fossa. So these three findings form the regular triad, that is pneumobilia, air in biliary tree, small bowel obstruction and the ectopic gallstone in RIF. These are the regular triad. Coming to the next that is Hirschsprung's disease. It is the most common cause of neonatal colonic obstruction that is Hirschsprung's disease. Most common cause of neonatal colonic obstruction. It is characterized by short segment of colonic agangliosis affecting term neonates especially boys. This is due to the failure of migration of the neural crest cell resulting in absent ganglion cells in submucus and myendric plexus in a colonic segment. So that is Hirschsprung's disease. And in it, investigation of choice in newborn is barium enema and you see a sudden change of caliber. This is important. What do you see? There is a sudden change of caliber. It was a narrow segment. And that the affected distal agglionic segment is very narrow and there is a dilated proximal normal bowel. So please listen, affected bowel is distal and contracted whereas normal bowel is proximal and it is dilated. So this sudden change of caliber is characteristic finding of barium enema in Hirschsprung's disease which is the investigation of choice also in newborns. But gold standard investigation is rectal biopsy to confirm that egg gangliosis. So the investigation of choice is barium enema but gold standard investigation is rectal biopsy. Now we will look through some MCQs. Anionate brought with bilious vomiting two weeks after birth. Barium meal is shown below. What is the likely diagnosis? So here it is bilious vomiting two weeks after birth and so here in the barium meal you see the Cox screw. And so what is your diagnosis? Yes, it is midgut volvulus. Do atresia usually presents on day one, bilious vomiting itself. And you see double bubble sign, double bubble sign. CHPS, it is non-bilious vomiting, usually after four weeks after birth. And midgut volvulus, bilious vomiting, two to three weeks after birth. And you see the Cox screw sign. So the, here the answer is midgut volvulus. Next MCQ, which condition is associated with the finding during the CT abdomen? 
here this is the classic whirlpool sign whirlpool sign seen in midget warblers a 70 year old man from asylum taken to emergency department with severe abdominal pain distension and obstipation what is obstipation even gas is not passing through the rectum that is obstipation his x-ray abdomen show the finding given below what is the diagnosis so x-ray shows the classic coffee bean appearance of sigmoid valvulus so the answer is sigmoid valvulus you have clues that is it's a neuropsychiatric patient from the asylum and so that is a clue and this is the classic coffee bean or bend in a tube sign of seen in, or the kidney sign seen in sigmoid valvulus three day old neonate has not passed meconium Medium minima is given below. What is the diagnosis? The most common cause of neonate colonic obstruction is a cause that is Hirschsprung's disease. You see the narrow affected segment with the dilated proximal, small, uh, proximal dilated normal segment. So this is the uh, case of Hirschsprung disease. A male baby few weeks after birth presents with non-milious vomiting. Per abdomen a palpable lump is present. X-ray followed by USC is done and what is your diagnosis? So here in X-ray you see the single bubble and in USC you see the classic cervix sign and the uh, target sign. So what is your diagnosis? It is the congenital hypertrophic pyloric stenosis CHPS. And that's all. Thank you. Dokumenta.